we, we could spend four hours right in this patch right here. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Okay. So hold on to that. Okay. We need to. We want to keep that one around. In fact, has have they? Have you seen this, Lisa? Show. Yeah, have you shown? Oh, okay. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Is yes. I want my mummies. So when I'm counting aphids, I'll tell you what happens when these aphid parasites get going. You're counting them. You flip the leaf over. 80% of the aphids are brown. You know what I mean? Is I don't need to spray for aphids. I'm at Kenny Haynes's and his 30 acres of broccoli, and we go out there, and he's like. I need to spray for aphids. Well, he had three kinds of ladybugs. He had some kind of fungus attacking the aphids, and he had these, these aphid mummies. I said, you wait three days and call me. He called me back three days later. He's like, I didn't need to spray. They all disappeared. And you know what it costs to spray 30 acres of, of broccoli? About 300 bucks an acre. And an opportunity cost, the time taken, when you could be doing weed control. So suddenly he's jumping up and down because he's like, holy cow, the bugs did it for me. And I'm. And, and Kenny was the one that shot those extension agents, you know, by saying, well, I'll grow 30 acres of broccoli organically, you know, and that's telling all these farmers they can't grow organically. So we got bachelor buttons in here, right? Isn't that what that, or is that zinnias? Zinnias. Okay, yeah. A beautiful little farmscaping patch that's reseeded itself. We'll get to it. It's okay. directly across from us, you know. All right. Um, and that's it, too, folks. A whole lot of the beneficial insect plants. Just let them go to flower and go to seed, and it's not automatic. You don't even have to plant them again. Right. Okay, I got three they, they, things in here. They're great self-seeders. Yes. You get the control. Have we you have a squash a bug. Cucumber beetle, also squash known as squash water. beetle. Mm -hmm. Right. Or 12-spotted. So that's diabrotica. You have... Those are flea beetles that you got off of collards or crucifers. Did you get them off a of crucifer? Okay, yeah, that's weird. Oh, that's okay. That might be a squash one. You're right. It doesn't have stripes on it. You really got to look at them. Yeah, I'm looking at that little thing. That looks like. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's a little brown thing. I'm not sure. Let me look at it. It's a little, yes, LBM. <laughs> yep, in there. There, yeah. Here. Okay. That's good. We need to hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> those are your ground. Those are ground you just caught. Wow. Those are all predators. So what we... The black thing right there crawling around, that little worm. The, the little one, that's, a, that's a, a ground beetle larva. Yeah. Okay. You, they okay. Good. Yes, they're good. All of these are good. The rove, the, there's a rove beetle in there too. This little wiggly one that uh -huh. looks like a dragon wiggling around. Uh -huh. All of these are great predators. What people don't realize is when, when we used to scout, we'd only scout during the day. Well, one of the things I started doing when I'm going to Seattle was I was staying in these hotel rooms. I've been to Seattle 41 times in the last five years. I got one of those pet urine detectors, ultraviolet and started looking around my room at all the stuff that was glowing. And I'm like, oh, I'm not having that pillowcase on my bed because oh. certain things glow that you don't want to oh get in contact God. with. All right, so I'm taking those off. So the next thing I do, I start going out at night. I'm like, why am I scouting during the day? You go out at night. These beetles are all over your plants at night and they eat caterpillars. Any, well, they'll eat any soft bodied insect that'll hold still long enough for them to, to take them down and they're great. So what's happened here with these ground beetles is you've got enough ground cover here that this, this field is probably just loaded with, 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 uh, with ground beetles. I wonder what's under the black. Under the black beetles. Hmm? Under the black, under the black stuff. Yeah. 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 They're probably, yeah, because it's warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you can, make, you can make what they call beetle banks. You know, the British are crazy. I mean, the British have taken this beetle stuff to, you know, I think they're crazy, and that's coming from me. That's saying a lot. And, and you know, the British have amateur beetle clubs. Like what this would be right here is these guys meet once a month, and they come out to a field like this, and they catch beetles, and they're like, oh, he caught a hyster beetle. Oh, I haven't seen that. You know, if, you, if you've ever watched Nature Channel, they have these guys that are running. It looks like something out of Monty Python with entomologists, right? <laughs> so what happens is what you've got there, what you, did you find those all in one little, oh, yeah, man, there you go. See what he, okay, what he did, there's, there's the importance of your overwintering site. So you having a little raggedy spot like that with a bunch of vegetation, that's where those things are hiding. The thing that I was going to say that the British do, they have something they call beetle banks. If you look it up on the internet, the British have, they have different beetle bank structures for different beetles. I mean, this is just crazy. What do you got there? Just the larva. 
Oh, okay, this is a um, squash beetle larva. So this is, this looks like, this is the same as like Mexican bean beetle larva. It's an epilacna. And so we have, a, there is a parasitic wasp that's available for that. It's that pediobius. So the bean beetle and the squash beetle are two different, but the larva looks very similar. Well, they're, they're both epilacna. They're both in the same genus. So they're, they're, they're the only two species of coccinellids that we have here that are pests. They're, coxin, they're ladybugs that are pests, okay? And so the pediobius work really good, and then other ladybugs that are eaten, all right. I was, no, that's yeah. a harmonia. Oh, I haven't seen this before. It has a, an M or a W on its head, mm -hmm. and then the other identifying character that's real hard to see um, it has two indentations on the back part of the elytra, way back here where I'm touching, the one on either side. Because this ladybug, this ladybug comes in, this ladybug comes in all different colors from solid red to solid black with two, it, ha it looks like that Chilocris lady beetle. Here it is here, come here. What's the one that's yellow? That is a squash beetle, well, it got away. It's a ladybug, but it's a pest ladybug, right? So there's n there's not many that are pests. These the eggs of that ladybug? I found it on the same plant. What are? Yes. Yeah, these are ladybug larvae hatching out. Wow. Just covering all the. How can you tell them when you look at them from a dark colored apron? Well, when this gets a little bigger, it ha it looks like. What did you say this was on? It was on this okra. Okra, okay. Um, the, 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 it hatched out of an egg that was gray colored and then there's a little tiny larva right there. You know, these are really small. It'd be better if this was, in fact, I should have brought my ocular. I got magnifying glasses and, and I'm scoping those out. So that's, so that's, um, and, and you'll, you'll find these a lot of times on this new upper growth. That is 12-spotted cucumber beetle, also known as southern corn rootworm. And uh, obviously in a different stage. Yeah. Well, in a different, pe it, different pests have different names in different crops. Or the same pest has different names, like corn earworm is also tomato fruit worm and cotton bollworm. You know what I mean? Because depending on what, oh, white flies. White flies like crazy. That's somebody else. Let me look. That is, that is an aphid, and I'm not sure if that aphid is getting mummified, but it looks like it's got fungus. Uh -huh. That is a, an aphid that has died. This is what I would, what I found in Kenny Haynes field. So we're going through looking all, yeah, here's another one. See, there's one that's died. That died of fungus. See, that, that was an aphid, and now it's flattened out like a pancake, and it's a Position. fungus. That is your aphelinid, that's your parasit. No, that is um, incarsia. Right, that's, that's what's controlling the white fly. That's what's controlling the white fly, right. Yeah. So we got the white fly, but do we carry so it on to the control controls right on the, the same leaf? Controls the white fly? Incarsia. E-N-C-A-R-S-I-A. -E yeah. See, we never so like that Johnny either. Incarsia, uh -huh. like the late. Uh, no, People sorry. buy it, but we never bought it. Yeah, take a look here, grab this there. So what happens a lot of times, if you guys think about it, because they're down, you're down here next to a creek, you're going to get kind of, you'll get other funguses that you wouldn't get if we were going up on the hill up there, because this area, and doing it organic, you get these big epizootics. Oh, cool. All right, we've got a, this is a small wolf spider. And this is another beneficial, and we didn't talk much. Did I wear my spider t-shirt? Yes, I did. All right, so, you know, spiders are important too. Here's spiders. Might as well open up my shirt. Spiders. So, you know, it's not, I mean, of course, I'm obsessed with parasitic wasps and insects because that's what I was trained in, but I'm, so here's a, that's a wolf spider. That's a baby, that's a small wolf spider. And would it be preying on squash beetle or bug larvae? Yes, it'll, it'll prey on anything that's moving around a little bit. It has to have a little bit of activity for, for it to attack it. But you can see that's not enough. That's, that's a little bit of white fly. It's almost to the point where it's concerning me, but not really because that's a fungus that's killed that aphid. And there's a fungus over, where's that other little flat piece? Yeah, that's an aphid. That's a dead, that's a dead fungicized aphid there. Nice. Oh, hey, I'll pet you. You did, you did really good. You had, yes, that is a big girl. Is going to get the white flies too? What is it? 
I got to tell you guys a story. Yes. Yeah. What is, is yeah, that fungus, what is, right. What is this here? That's the, that's the parasitic wasp that attacks the white fly okay. nymphs. You know, white fly nymphs look like a little trilobite. They look like a little scale. Oh, Those bad. parasitic wasps come up and they tap them like a watermelon. And they have to ring right. Well, they're tapping them to make sure nobody else is parasitizing. And they hit them and it rings and then boom, I've got pictures of them parasitizing. I got to tell you guys a story about this. One day I'm out scouting and these two bugs are coming to each other and one of them is a, a predaceous stink bug and the other is this exact, this is um, one of the big nabids. I think this is Nabis americophorus, but I'm not sure. I, I don't remember right now. So these guys come up to each other and I'm like, this guy is going to walk through that stink bug. And they start circling each other and suddenly that stink bug sets out its proboscis into the neck of this beetle and they sit there for about 10 or 15 seconds and suddenly you see this, be this big beetle go and the stink bug kills and eats this big, I didn't think, I thought this thing was invincible. That is a ground beetle. That's one of your better, this is your, this is your nighttime caterpillar manager. Well, and the stink bugs are predators then? Well, the stink bug I'm talking about was a predaceous stink bug. So anyway, just by looking at that, you think there's nothing that could take that thing down. And here, this little tiny spindly yeah. predaceous stink bug stabs it in the necks and drinks all the fluid out of it. I'm like, you've got to be right. kidding me. One of my favorite shots I got, I actually had to go back and get my camera when I was supposed to go to market. Uh, a few Very good water. predator. This is mainly a predator of caterpillars at night. So you have to be out here at night to see these. Go on ahead. Fine soldier bug had Oops, I guess I should come down. Now, I took that picture and went to market and left tons of potato beetle larvae on that plant. By the time I got back, it cleaned up all the potato beetle larvae too. So if it's really not fussy, it doesn't care if it's beneficial or not. You know, it's just going to take out every soft body insect around. Right. Um, but why do we have it? Because we, ha we allow the potato beetle larvae populations to stay there and then in come all the predatory bugs. They love those high populations of soft body larvae. Squash bug. This gets attacked. Now, I tell you, when I see squash bug, I nuke it with soap. I have a little soap container thing that I keep next to my, um, some of my, uh, my cucumbers, and I nuke them. But certain ones of these, this one doesn't have it, have big white eggs on them. And those you might not want to kill because they are, a, that's a tachinid fly called uh, Trichopoda penipes, okay? And it's a really neat fly because it's red and has big fuzzy red legs. So I mean, they're they're um, when you see them, you'll know you'll know what they look like. Now, so w once again, this is one of those. This is a mandatory squish item for me see, when I'm out. We get pretty darn good control without even. Yeah, what are you controlling those with? Well, we control it by controlling the um, vine borer. We spray twice a week, all summer long. What are you spraying? Soap and BT. Oh, okay. So we, Just you know, at the base? At the base. At the base, that's okay. Kinda, there are all these other methods, but that's the most cost-effective method for us for controlling vine borer. Wow. And serendipitously, the soap takes out at least the, at least the nymphs. I don't know if it gets mm. the adults all the time, but it sure nails the nymphs. You know? mm. And if you nail the nymphs all the time, we have low levels of the bugs, but not enough of their problems. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like we're trying yeah, to control those. We're just spraying yeah, regularly to control the vine same beetle, yeah. Alive. Yeah, it's still, that guy's barely alive. It's just having the memories of the last caterpillar it ate before it started to kick off. Oh, oh nice. Okay. This is, okay. This is one of the reasons I grow fennel. This is going to turn out to be one of your butterflies. That is going to be a swallowtail. Right. And the, have you guys seen the, the horns that pop out of it, the little stinky yeah. orange horns? So if you go like this and you irritate it a little bit, watch these horns come out. There they are. Wow. And it has, oh, cool. it has cyanide. Smell it. It's cyanide. That's cyanide. So it's smearing. You wouldn't want it. You don't want to touch. You don't want to mess with that thing when it gets that big. Yeah, right. It wants to let you know. Right. It's, it's going to get yeah, look. See, it's like, hey. Right. See? And it's trying, it's trying to hit me. Right. It, you know, it's like, hey, if you're a parasitic wasp, well, I'm going to kick your butt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe you with cyanide, and the next thing, you're not going to be interested in attacking me. You're going to be figuring out how to get this yeah, burning sensation. Worm, no, no. I found a hornworm in my tinnitus yesterday. They have cocoons sticking out of it? That's Cochia, that's Cochia congregata. That's another good beneficial. You want to keep those hornworms around. Even though they do those are the pupae of the wasp. Like, 
Remember the one that I showed you in there, that broccoli stem that had all those white cocoons? That's yeah. the same thing like that, except they pop out of the, they won't attack this guy. I, I, I know. I I'm sorry, I'm just messing. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's another one. This is kind of fun because, you know, when we do our farmscaping with kids and stuff too, this is a, this is a really nice benefit is when I'm driving down the road and I smash a, a swallowtail butterfly on my car, I go, well, I know I got three more for the one that I killed in my garden. You know what I mean? I'm not, at least I can, well, I, I can know. say, he's, yes. I think he's a